Welcome to the third Rever Q&A of 2021. I'm Patrick from the community team, and we appreciate you joining us, and we've got quite a bit to cover today. If you're joining us on the forum, you can find Beth on the community team hanging out with everyone there. So go ahead and tag her at Beth-Rev. I'd like to welcome our guests for today's presentation. We have Jason Chicola, Rev CEO, Product Managers Lucy Huang and Armand Butani, Kelly Toker, Director of Operations, and Brianna McDougal, Senior Community Manager. As you've become familiar with, we're going to start, with, start off with Jason's message, then move on to the speaker's presentations. At the end, the speakers you heard today will be answering questions you submitted on Slido. It looks like Jason's running a bit behind today, so to keep things moving along, allow me to introduce Lucy Huang with some product updates. Thanks, Patrick. Um, really excited to share some product updates here today. Um, so on the next slide here, I'm just waiting for that to load. Yeah, wanted to talk about the Happy Customers tab. We launched this in late August, and basically this is a new tab on the Find Work page that shows projects um, from customers that have previously given Revers high ratings. We built this for plus captioning and transcription Revers. We really wanted to show y'all that customers truly appreciate um, and trust all the hard work that you do. And we also wanted to save y'all time on um, finding projects that y'all like. So what's up next for us? Um, we're working uh, on the early stages of encouraging customers to rate more often. So that way rubbers have more projects to choose from and also exploring um, how to expand this to non-plus rubbers too. And on the next slide here, um, this is just an example of what it looks like today. And now I'll hand it off to Armand. Thanks, Lucy. Um, super excited to share uh, the new volume multiplier release that we launched in mid-September. Um, essentially what this is, is um, providing Revers an opportunity to get promoted back to plus. So anyone that's dropped from plus um, will be able to see a volume multiplier for more difficult files. Um, and that volume multiplier will apply until they get back into the plus uh, domain. Um, why we built it, it's really just a way for us to get that promotion back um, and have that done more quickly and efficiently. If you go over to the next slide, um, there's a quick screenshot of what that looks like in find work. Um, so you can see under the length column here, there's a 5.25x minute volume multiplier um, that would be applied to that particular job. If you pop over to the next slide, I can talk about some of the other features that we're releasing. So uh, the new TC and CP application questions were launched on October 1st. Um, what this means is that most TC and CP applicants will now go through a new application flow um, that includes some new questions around um, English and grammar skills to make sure that we can gauge the skills of, of Revers as they join the platform. Um, and it also helps us set clear expectations when Revers begin the process um, to make sure they're prepared for what they're looking for um, coming into starting work with Rev. Um, on the next slide, there's a quick example of sort of what some of these short answer questions look like um, and what it will look like when you're going through the new application flow. Finally, on the next slide, um, we are launching, and we're really excited about this, but launching the new TC style guide quiz uh, tomorrow. Um, what this means is that when rookies now complete uh, onboarding, prior to completing their first customer job, they'll complete a style guide quiz. Um, and this is really to help better prepare rookies to complete customer jobs, um, help everyone feel more prepared and confident in their abilities, um, and test knowledge, identify areas that you know, people can improve. Um, what's next for us? We are working on a lot of continued onboarding changes um, and really trying to dig into what we can do to make the onboarding experience more robust and more exciting for reps as they come through Rev. And on the next slide, there's just a, a screenshot of what it'll look like when you start the TC style guide quiz um, in the application process. And now I'll pass it over to Kelly to talk about some more up and coming changes for Revers. Hey everyone, uh, excited to be talking to you about where we are currently putting some efforts and where you should be changing, seeing some changes in soon. Um, so one is the Ask an Expert feature. Uh, hopefully you've heard of it, but if you haven't, Ask an Expert is the way for Revers to get help from, well, experts. Uh, they're experienced fellow Revers, and the goal of this program is, is to get help in a timely manner. Unfortunately, Things aren't working as well as we want them to. Response rates are, are slower than desired. Accuracy of responses can be improved, probably due to lack of revs training of experts. 
And also experts have expressed the need for updates to better do their jobs. Um, so our goals with this is actually to provide all revers accurate real-time answers to on-the-job questions and for experts to be compensated to answer them. Um, so our actual, we hope to see uh, a limited launch at minimum at sometime in 2022. What I mean by limited is possibly we only make it available for certain hours during the day, uh, but either way, it should be a really great help for everybody so that when they run into trouble, they can get answers fast. Another area that we are spending a lot of time is our premium quality services. You may have heard of, heard of it, but under the name of PRO. Today, we are working with customers who have specific needs not met by Rev's offerings. Um, this could be that they have new customization needs or they need even faster delivery than Rev offers today. Uh, they could need better consistency or even new file formats. Um, today, we're testing this right now in captions with a small group of caption Revers to best determine how, what our customers need and, and how we can meet those needs. But the goal is broader than that. Our goal is to offer it both in transcription and captions. Thus, you'll see benefits by, we will create more work for all Revers um, and then also generate more happy customers, which I think is a win-win for everybody. So hopefully you'll start seeing this more broadly and more announcements uh, in 2022, if not sooner. So now I'll pass it over to hopefully a familiar name, Brianna, uh, that will tell you or talk a little bit about community and some fun river facts. Thanks, Kelly. Uh, so first I wanted to talk to you about some updates and some things that we've recently started in community that you may or may not have seen. Uh, first thing is we've launched a whole bunch of social events. So you might see those as movie nights, game nights, um, maybe some other fun things in the works in the future. We're aiming to have these at least monthly um, and then hopefully increasing them uh, as we kind of get some of the kinks worked out initially. And you'll receive notifications of these occurring um, via email and forums where you can RSVP. Next is the Rever Show. So Patrick has been doing a great job of creating this video podcast. Um, you'll see things like gear reviews, Ask Patrick Anything, and interviews with Rev staff, potentially Revers too. Uh, we're releasing these monthly and the latest one just got released earlier this week. So be sure to check it out here on our YouTube channel. And lastly, we've been really focusing a lot on finding ways to increase education op opportunities for rookies. We're doing this in a few different formats with weekly office hours for our transcription and caption rookies where you can hop into a Zoom and ask questions of tenured revers uh, to help make sure that you can graduate quickly and keep those metrics in really high standing. Uh, next, we're also doing monthly webinars. So you may have seen these in a Rev 101 webinar. Uh, last month, we just did one about metrics. Um, so we're planning to release new webinars on a monthly basis and potentially rerunning some of the most popular ones more frequently as well. Um, again, you'll see notifications for both of these events um, through uh, the bell icon and through forums, possibly through emails as well. And finally, we tested a welcome email series for rookies. So after you've passed IDV, you'll receive a series of about six emails walking you through some of the biggest pain points and questions that we see uh, coming from rookies. So this gives you a lot of information in a really timely fashion and has we've seen great results with uh, the tests that we've run um, in terms of rookies being able to complete jobs faster and graduate faster. So we've run a test about these and we'll start setting them up um, to run automatically here in the next month. Next, I'd love to talk to you about some fun rubber facts that we thought, you know, might just be an interesting way to get to know this community a little bit better. So first fact, we asked what U.S. state might have the most registered rubbers, And it's probably no surprise that the, that state is Texas. Uh, we actually have had almost 40,000 people register to be REVers in Texas since the beginning of REV. Next, we were wondering how many REVers have perfect metrics? These numbers were actually really astounding to me. Captioners have almost 11,500 folks with perfect metrics. And in transcription, we're seeing over 80,000 folks 
um, who have perfect metrics. This is over all time. Uh, so of course, you know, some of these folks don't rev anymore and that's okay. Maybe we'll see them back in the future. Another question we were wondering is how far away is the furthest place from our Austin headquarters with revers? And the answer there is Perth, Australia. It's actually 10,447 miles away from Austin. And then lastly, we're wondering how old are revers? Uh, on average, the biggest majority of revers is our 26 to 45 year old age group. Um, but we have some great representation in the 18 to 25 year olds and 65 plus, along with a strong contingent in 46 to 65. Uh, and then finally, we wanted to really start to celebrate revers more. And uh, I know that this has been a thing that we've talked about in forums. We have more things that we can do, but wanted to really celebrate all of our birthdays in October. So we have uh, four revers um, that are all the same age and had birthdays in October that are our oldest revers. And then we have some younger revers that are new to the group uh, and are turning either 18 or 19 and may have just started or been with Rev for a little under a year. So happy birthday to everybody born in October. With that, I'll kick it back to Patrick, who's going to uh, introduce Jason. Thanks, Brianna. All right, so we were just a little bit out of order today, but that's all good. Um, we do have Jason here, and I'd like to introduce him and have him kick it off for us. Jason, take it away, please. Uh, great. Uh, hey, thank you. Um, thank you, Patrick, and everybody for giving those uh, updates. Um, I want to just start by giving a little bit of an uh, update on what's going on across the company. Um, you know, folks who've been working, you know, as a rever for some time know that there's different teams and departments of rev that do different things. We have a product team that, you know, designs the, the, the product that you guys use. And you heard today, you know, today from Lucy and Armin about what they're building to make the experience better for revers and also to raise standards. So we do a better job for our customers. Um, we have uh, operations community teams that work really hard on everything from bringing revers on to maintaining quality standards to answering rubber questions and supporting you know revers needs on a day-to-day -day basis. Um, we have other parts of the company that don't touch the revers, but rather touch the customers. And I would say that the biggest changes at Rev over the last two years are that the customer-facing parts of the organization have been focused on selling to larger customers, what we call enterprise customers, improving our products and services so that big companies think Fortune 500 brands that you have that you know about to get them using Rev more, um, more, more big customers spending more. Why does that matter? That matters because uh, most of the important video and audio content in the world runs through really big companies. They have the most content, the biggest budgets, the most spend, and uh, our ability to get, to earn their trust by delivering good results now consistently and working with these companies in the ways they want to be worked with, um, that's what drives our ability to uh, grow the amount uh, of work quality and quantity um, available to all the revers. So when we, we have, for example, a sales team that's calling on large customers and having quite a bit of success at, at uh, both expanding our accounts and, uh, that we serve and getting you know new accounts. I mean, just this quarter, I. Um, Maybe I, probably, I don't know if I probably shouldn't mention customer names, but but uh, many household names, uh, large companies are using us and they're expanding their accounts which, that drives more work for all the revers. The other thing I, I would want to highlight is that um, you know much of the early years of Rev was uh, the way we grew our business is that we acquired um, small customers, mostly through the internet, people who pay with a credit card, and we continue to do that. Um, but as we get large companies using us, large companies on average, because they serve large audiences, tend to have higher standards of quality. So one of the most consistent things we hear from these uh, larger companies is, uh, can you give us higher accuracy, uh, premium options? And so I think one of the most significant efforts underway this quarter, and we have uh, two full product and engineering teams focused on this, is we are investing more in our premium transcription, or sorry, our premium caption offering, uh, which some of you guys know about, uh, we're also, and this is you know breaking news, uh, we're also going to be building a premium op offering for transcription. What does that mean? That means the customers will pay more per minute, 
in, in return for a higher standard of quality, and those jobs will pay the drivers more. And uh, we launched the premium captions offering a few months ago on, on a limited basis with some of our larger customers. Uh, I've seen the early uh, reviews from the clients have been rave reviews. They're quite happy with the offering in terms of the quality it's delivered. That said, it's still early for us. We believe in a culture of continuous improvement. We never stop, we never rest. We're always trying to make it better. Uh, I know that uh, one of our teams this quarter is working to uh, further improve the uh, quality standards of premium captions so to make to make our customers happier and bring it to more large customers. And again, like I just said, uh, we're gonna take that same philosophy um, that we use for premium, premium captions and roll out premium transcription uh, I, I don't want to offer definitive time, but I know that the team is going to hustle and, and deliver, you know, a beta version to a few customers as fast as possible. And a little bit on how we operate. Um, when you have a lot of customers, when you roll out things that are new, you generally don't go from zero to, you know, zero to hundred overnight. You typically start small with a few customers. So uh, I would expect that when premium transcription rolls out, it'll be in some, limited beta for a few customers while we iron out the kinks before we then expand to a larger audience. But putting those things together, we're committed. Um, well, we have two sides of our business. We have customers and we have revers. To the customers, we're committed on giving them a premium service tier that they can choose. If they want to pay extra or higher quality, we want to make that easy for them. Today, premium captions, last I checked, it wasn't even on our website. So it still is not fully rolled out. Um, I would anticipate that you know a year from now, Customers will have the easy ability to choose standard caption or transcription or premium or premium costs more, high, uh, they get higher quality, higher standard, and we pay more for it. And so that, uh, we believe that's good for the customer and good for uh, whoever's who are eligible for that kind of work based on their on their quality standards. Um, that's where I wanted to start. I know that there's some questions and I know there's a couple that... Um, that I'm, I'm going to answer here. Uh, Patrick, how, how should we do this? Do, should we kick over to the list of questions or, or uh, how should we jump into the questions? Yeah, um, we'll queue them up and then we'll just start right there. I think uh, a couple of yours are first. So we'll just start with you and then the rest will follow your lead. Great. All right. So uh, this is like an age old question. Um, it's an important one because everywhere that uh, you know, everywhere that people see uh, AI, it creates excitement uh, because because AI can do amazing things that it couldn't do five years ago, and yet fear of change. And, and so, how do we see it playing out? Um, so, the answer to the question, um, so the question I think is, do we plan on being fully AI, which I think would mean um, the work's done without humans? The answer is a definitive and resounding no. As I just said, when we go to a large customers, they tell us again and again, we want to pay more for higher quality. I mean, I'll tell you, you know, uh, maybe a dirty secret about one of our services. Our captions are not, I would say, perfectly up to broadcast quality standards. We're working to get there. The, the market, big customers, large scale distribution wants, they want perfect accuracy. No one's perfect, but they want us to get closer to perfect. So the market that we're pursuing, which is the people that have a lot lots to spend on speech to text services, wants higher accuracy. And uh, if there was a way to deliver perfect accuracy without humans, I guess we would do it. But I don't think that there is. I think that the way you deliver great accuracy is by the best combination of uh, of people, all of you, with the world's best technology. And, and we, we view our technology as there's two different pieces. We have the tool you use to type, and we have the underlying um, algorithm that we use that, that, that uh, converts audio to text. And so we invest in both of those. We believe in the combination of the best freelancers with the best tool, with the best AI, that's the winning formula. Um, none of our large customers are saying, please make it much cheaper, but lower the quality. They're saying the opposite. They're saying, raise the bar, raise the quality. Uh, that's why... Um, that's why uh, I believe the opportunity for Revers and for, you know, for Revers is, is uh, you know, getting better and better. The nature of the job is changing in that as our AI becomes more accurate, um, the job uh, has become, in many cases, more of an editing job than typing from, from scratch job. You know, I think that that's, uh, you know, a pretty good 
evolution of technology. I mean, if I um, if I think back to the early days of Rev, Revers were typing in a Word document. They were typing into a Word document with no AI support. Today, they type in our tool, which we think is best in class with AI, and they're working a lot faster than they did when we started. Much, much, much faster. And we think that evolution is good for the Rever because it results in um, you know, higher effective pay per minute. If you can make the same money in less time, that's good for the Rever. It's good for the customer, and then it leads to the jobs being done faster, and customers care about speed. Part of why we call the company Rev is because when people hear, hear Rev, they think of speed, and customers want speed, and we deliver. So um, there, there are, um, the answer is not black and white because there are uh, certain areas where there might be a customer that has huge amounts of raw footage and they don't need it perfect. They just need something rough. And if they have a need for rough accuracy, AI is great. So we believe AI allows us to expand the market and get in front of a lot, a lot, lot more customers. Uh, but what I can tell you is that the bulk of the customers, the bulk of the dollars want to pay for accuracy, um, which is why we're here, why we started this business, because, you know, the business we started, I started it uh, to create, you know, the words we use now are great work for home jobs powered by AI. And I don't see that changing. Uh, next question. Um, there's a there's a lot more we can do to improve. Um, so I think this this question about a caption tool, there's a ton that we can do to improve syncing. It's a really important uh, step that in general is very time consuming and not as efficient as it could be. Um, but as I say, stated earlier, uh, I believe our primary priority related to uh, to this area is, is improving and rolling out these premium uh, services for transcription and captions, because like I said, it leads to more revenue from the customers, happier customers, it leads to more uh, pay for revers. And so that's what we think is the right priority right now. Uh, next question. So uh, this is what I imagine will be the most interesting questions that I hope hope will get people to uh, lean forward in their seats. And you know, I we know how important it is. We are under no illusions that uh, pay and productivity have got to be near the top of the list of revenue concerns. I'm going to first start out by um, sharing with you some thoughts about how I think about it. What I think are the important um, efforts we do in our company to uh, to grow revenue earning potential over time. And in a minute, I'm going to share with you some specific numbers, dollars and cents that I have not shared before. And um, I think it'll provide some helpful color. And these numbers are numbers that I don't plan to offer on a regular basis. We're a private company. We have co competitors in general as a private company. Doesn't make sense to share every single, every single thing about yourself. But I do think now and then um, it's worth it for us to open a kimono to, to the community because Rev wouldn't be here, but that each and every one of you I talk to customers, you know, uh, at least every week that tell us we love Rev and they love Rev because Revers do great work. And I, and, and I want to bring you into the tent and show you some details about our business, information I wouldn't normally share. I don't know what you make of it, but I'll just tell you what the facts are and you can draw your own conclusions. So um, the, the, amount, the amount that, uh, you know, a Rever can earn in an hour, a job, a week, or a month, depends on a lot of factors. Um, broadly, I think about there's uh, rever effective pay, which I'll talk about in a minute, what, how that breaks, uh, what, what breaks into that, uh, what, what feeds into that, and then there's, then there's a volume of work. Getting more customers is one way to getting more volume of work, which is very important. But let me talk about the factors that, 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 that drive how much revers can earn. Um, I think there's three factors that primarily matter. I have numbers in the first one, I don't have numbers in the second two right now, um, but but I, I think you guys will see the picture. Uh, the first factor is the amount that we pay per minute of audio, right? It matters a lot. Um, so so that, in a minute, I'll tell you um, what the number has been in transcription over the last two years. Uh, so, so again, Rever competition starts with the price that we pay per minute of audio. Second is uh, the tool, the tool that we offer. This is the editor and all the surrounding software from the fine work page to the stuff within the editor, the shortcuts. Um, we've invested thousands and thousands of man hours in building what we think is the best typing tool ever created on earth. And all those improvements are driven by people like Lucy and Armin that talk with Revers and sit there with a stopwatch and look for what's gonna save people time. Because the purpose of the tool is to help Revers do better work in less time so the customer's happy and Revers can get the job done 
effectively and efficiently. And, and again, as I mentioned, it, uh, any of you that have been around Rev for more than two or three years know that we used to not have AI, we used to not have a tool, we used to need a Word document. Productivity today is way higher than it was a couple of years ago. And that productivity is not only good for the customer, and then it drives, uh, helps things get done faster, but it's clearly good for the Rev because it allows uh, you know, more work in less time. Um, and the third thing is the accuracy of our AI. The accuracy of our, of our AI is an important factor that contributes to our earnings because as the AI has gotten better, it gets more things right off the start and that lowers the time it takes to do a job. Um, so now I'm just gonna share. So the one area where I have you know, hard data to share, I, I spent some time this morning with uh, Aaron Fox who runs our operations team and he went into uh, our uh, data warehouse tool and, and dug in, we, we dug, confirmed and triple checked um, the numbers which I'm about to share, which show quite simply, what has been our pay per minute in transcription um, over time? And we looked at today, one year ago, and two years ago. So two years ago was October of 2019. In that month, the average pay per minute for transcription, and this is just for somebody that does the transcription, this is not including grading or other pieces, this is, this is for uh, the job, uh, was 49 cents. Two years ago, October 19 was 49 cents. Um, last year, a year ago, October 20, it was 53 cents. This month, October 21, it's running 59 cents. So over two year period, the pro, what in our internal database, it calls the primary job cost, does not include grading, does not include reduce or a bunch of other stuff. There's all kinds of, there's a lot of things that happen for a bill to, for a bill to become a law. A lot can go wrong <laughs> with someone's job. There's other things we have to do that we have to pay for. But the amount that we pay for somebody starting and finishing a job went from in transcription, which is our largest service line, went from 49 cents to 53 cents to 59 cents over the last two years. Draw your conclusions, I'm giving you the data. But that's an increase of 20% or a little over 20% in the primary job cost. There are two other areas I mentioned where we've made substantial improvements. And, and there, um, measurements of productivity are a little dicey. And I, well, I've seen some numbers, I don't, I don't have, it's not as simple as measuring dollars and cents. Um, but what I can tell you broadly is the tool, we certainly think it's a lot better than it was. Uh, um, and the, the major area we've been investing in the tool has been to make it work for longer files because the tool historically has kind of crapped out on long files, which is bad for whoever, bad, bad for the customer. So we, we think as the, as the, what we call frost rolls out, we believe that it makes the tool available for more jobs, helps more revers. And there's been a lot of subtler changes in the tool that over time contribute to, to productivity. Um, if, you know, some of you may know that, for example, you know, Patrick, who's I'm seeing here, has put out a bunch of videos on how to, how to be a faster transcriptionist. And if you haven't invested in learning how to use the shortcuts and all the other tools in the editor, we highly recommend it. If you take advantage of the full power of the tool, I think there are many avenues to grow your productivity. Uh, the third area of change has been the AI. Two years ago, uh, we didn't have any AI. Everything we did was, was from scratch, literally from scratch. And now we have AI and every quarter or so, we release a new version of that AI. Every time we release a new version, it's better. What does better mean? It means uh, the AI gets, has fewer mistakes. It's a long way from the human, but it's a lot better than it used to be. And we're actually in the process over the next few months of rolling out a new version of the AI that we think will you know, dramatically reduce the errors that are there by another 20 to 30%. So I think there's another step change of productivity coming, which is a subtle thing. I, I understand that it's, it's, it's not, this sort of change, it's a little bit invisible. It's not very easy to see from where you sit. Um, this kind of change, because, you know, a, a change of reduction of, of one out of four errors, it, it may be hard to notice, you know, because each job is different. Some jobs are better than others. Um, but I just wanted to share that's, uh, I gave you hard facts on pay per minute, um, you know, it's, it, uh, you know, and on the tool, we've invested a lot in productivity and continue to in both areas. Um, the caveats are that that's average, that's aggregate, that's real, that's across the board, but every job is different, every rever is different. Being a rever plus versus a rever versus a rookie, those are different. Um, it depends on what jobs you do and where you where you are. Some people, you know, who find their way into plus are able to get all the jobs they want. Some people 
you know, depending on when they work or where they work or what level is may not find the jobs they love. And, and there's a lot of problems here working really hard to find the right person for the right job. Um, so I don't, by saying this, uh, I'm sure there's some people that, that, that hear this and, and it reflects their experience. Um, some people might have a better experience. Some people might have a worse experience. Maybe the jobs that they do, you know, have had a different path. What I can tell you is these are the aggregate all in numbers. And um, so uh, that's a long answer to a short question, but I wanted to address it because, um, you know, this is a concern of when I'm talking about it. I just talked about it. Uh, I know this is a, an important issue and I'm sure that people have all kinds of strongly held opinions about this. And I want you to know that we care deeply about what you think, how you feel. And I'm sure that there are um, many uh, parts of our system, you know, maybe a great job type, maybe somewhere else where things are off, not as they should be. We want to hear about it. I've often shared my email address. I'll do it again. My email address is simply jason at rev.com. I'm sure that some of you have strong feelings on, on pay, um, where it is, where it should be, where, what you're seeing, what your experience is. Does your experience map to what I described or not? Um, I welcome any and all email, Jason at rev.com. I promise to read every single one. Uh, we care, we wanna listen. Um, big picture, uh, we are trying to, via pay, software, and AI, make being a rever more attractive over time. That's our intention. It'll continue to be our intention. Um, that's all I got. Uh, Patrick, back to, you. Back, back to you and the rest of the questions. Thanks, Jason. We'll uh, continue with the Slido, and I believe, Jenny, you are up next. Awesome. Thanks, Patrick, and thank you, Jason, for answering those questions. So this question is, is there a chance REL will offer Spanish transcription again? The short answer is yes. We are actually actively looking into how to offer this service for our global customers that have a need for this. Moving on to the next question. Okay, suggestion, it'd be great if we can add comments when we submit a project. Sometimes it's helpful to point something out in the project. Um, thanks for the suggestion. We actually used to have this feature, but we have removed it because it wasn't being used or reviewed frequently enough internally. So while we appreciate the suggestion, it's probably not something we'll prioritize unless we can figure out a really good way to use those comments internally. Next question, has it been officially decided that the TC editor is here to stay or will it be removed? If the, if the latter, why can't we keep the TC editor? Also, great question. So overall, our goal here is to replace the TC editor with our new line editor for all revers because it is much faster, allows you to work on much longer files and overall is easier for us internally to make continuous improvements to the platform long-term as Jason alluded to. That being said, we are not going to remove the TC editor until our new line editor has all the key features that you need to be successful. So think things like support for typing from scratch, foot pedals, um, job only text expanders. Those are some of the things we're thinking about. And then two, we wanna make sure all revers have adequate time to really get used to it. That way you're not feeling like we're really jerking the wheel on you. So overall plans to replace the TC editor um, with our new editor in the coming months, but we won't do that unless we, until we've got everything kind of um, ready to go. Next question, can we get the option to keep files unclaimed within the first hour available for a later attempt? This is a good suggestion as well, and we'll definitely think about it. And then next question, the recent survey hinted that Rev may be considering getting rid of the ability to type from scratch and foot pedal support, how? First of all, I want to apologize for any confusion that this may have caused. As I mentioned before, this is not true. We have no plans to get rid of this. In fact, we wanna make sure we're actually supporting those capabilities in the line editor before we um, deprecate the TC editor. So overall, we're actually using the results from the survey to figure out what TC editor features we absolutely must support in the new line editor so that we can make you comfortable using new line. I'll pass it over to Brianna now. Awesome, thanks Jenny. So for Melanie, we, she asked, we were recently locked out of the help center for three plus days due to an error. Any plans to move the help center from Zendesk to something internal to Rev? Great question. And we agree that being able to unaccess the help center is a significant problem. Uh, during our troubleshooting of this issue, we uh, 
we learned that it was not due to a Zendesk limitation, um, but rather an unattended consequence of an action taken by a staff member. So we've taken all the necessary steps to resolve the issue and improve process to ensure that it doesn't happen again. Um, but again, it was not a uh, limitation of Zendesk. So therefore at this time, there's no plans to move away from Zendesk. Of course, that's always subject to change if things change with Zendesk in the future. Next question. Since many rev emails are going missing due to Microsoft issues, will you consider an email, an internal email tool for all rev emails accessible within rev itself? Uh, great question. You, as you all know, we've made a number of changes to resolve this issue. However, you know, it's very clear that there's still people experiencing problems here. And the, I want to reassure everyone, the appropriate teams are involved in ongoing resolution for this issue. However, in the meantime, we also want to make sure that all important communications are being distributed through multiple channels. So you should see things come through email, a mixture of email, your bell icon, and your forums. Um, if you're still experiencing issues that you'd like to get resolved, please feel free to reach out to the community team, revrteam at rev.com, or support at rev.com to have your rev records updated with a non-Microsoft domain email address, which is our best workaround at this time. All right, pass it off to Kelly for the last few questions. Thanks, Brianna. Um, so now we're just gonna start off with a few subtitle questions. Uh, when will the dashboard be implemented for subtitle revers as well? Um, great question. Uh, today, we do not have a metric dashboard for subtitlers and it's something that is, is lacking on the subtitle side of things. Uh, however, implementing a metrics dashboard isn't a small task at all. Uh, not only does it involve exposing all the metrics and, and stats on a rever, but we also have to figure out how to use those metrics and reward the great ones and possibly ding for, for poor ones. Uh, so it's, it's definitely a large undertaking that we do plan to take on it at some point, but we don't actually have a timeline at the moment, unfortunately. Another subtitle question. Uh, so deadlines are based on length of files instead of volume. Uh, why doesn't Rev take the word count into consideration? For subtitles, it's a huge impact. Uh, really interesting feedback. Uh, thank you so much for that. Um, I can definitely understand how just word count would, would change the amount of effort and, and time going into these projects. The short answer is no, we don't have plans to lengthen deadlines. Uh, there's kind of that for a few reasons. So currently uh, we have 30 minute files typically get about 16 hours um, to work on, which can be really short, I understand, for all the translation work that goes into it, but it also can seem really long for a customer. Um, and ultimately, we, you know, we want to deliver something that the customer is happy with. So we kind of look at this, and long term, our goal is to shorten that timeline by making the process simpler for subtitlers and, and translators and, and making everything more efficient, whether that's, uh, you know, being using our uh, interfaces um, to make things easier to do, or, or even trying a first pass on translations. Uh, I would assume the, the long term would actually be to shorten these, but uh, we're not near that yet. Um, but we, we don't have extents, we don't have plans to lengthen it at the time. Next question. Uh, so switching directions, we're talking about PayPal. Uh, is it possible to receive direct deposits instead of PayPal? We are making very little doing work for Rev, then PayPal takes a chunk of our earnings. So our community team was able to dig in and, and clarify some of these questions. Um, and we realized that this is mostly focused around fees for currency conversion for our international Revers. Um, if you are seeing fees taken out as not an international Rever, as someone based in the US, uh, you know, please look into your PayPal account, um, you know, and, and reach out to PayPal because Rev makes an effort to, to pay those fees. Um, but back to the question, uh, as we've, um, right now, we only have PayPal. Uh, we do not have alternatives planned. The reason why we chose PayPal is, is just based on its wide availability across the world, um, as well as the speed to deliver earnings into your own bank account, which is really what matters at the end of the day. Um, it's possible that we will look into alternatives. We have done it in the past, so we could do it in the future, but it's just not planned for right now. 
could Rev explore more goal setting and bonus earnings, i.e. if we transcribe so many minutes of, or, or so many minutes per day slash week, you get a bonus of USD five or optional star ratings. Uh, thank you for asking this question. This is great. So yes, this is definitely something that we are evaluating for future use. Um, and you may even see some updates on fairly soon. So uh, finding the correct incentives to reward forevers for completing projects, particularly during times when customers have high demand is a win-win situation for, for both of us. Um, so we are definitely beginning to test some incentives, uh, possibly monetary, possibly other things. Um, and so we'll be sure to let you know if any of these launch or if you are being impacted by any of these tests that we are starting. But thank you. This is a, a great suggestion and question. Uh, is there any action a rever can take if they hear something illegal on, the on a transcript? Another really great question. Uh, so let's start off by saying, if you hear something of high concern, you can always reach out to support. You can reach out to them via support at rev.com, write an email, let them know what's going on, and they will get back to you. Do not contact anyone outside of the Rev organization that includes customers, since it could result in violation of our terms of service and then your removal from Rev, which we do not want to do. Um, often customers will submit audio to Rev to be transcribed either for audit purposes or where the customer either knows the content already um, and they're, they're submitting it to us as a follow-up step or they'll be reviewing it as soon as you submit these files. Um, so it, the knowledge will be passed on to the customer. That said, I'm sure that tons of revers have this question. So I will be sure to have the team add a help center article on this topic so that we are always clear about what you should do. Uh, when are we getting a new style guide, particularly captions, re up carrots specifically? Another great question. We're, we're moving on to some, some really good ones. Um, so the style guide, if you don't know, is a set of guidelines that when followed are meant to result in files that customers are satisfied with. So there's two parts to style guide. One is, is the rules that we're uh, setting for revers. And, and the other one is, is it aligning with customers' satisfaction? We're currently at the stage where we're working with customers to see what they care about and also what's less critical to them. Um, the idea is, is that if something doesn't matter to them, we can remove it from the style guide and, and simplify it. So our hope is to simplify the style guide by the end of the year. Um, but it takes a lot of revisions to launch something new like this. We work not only with customers, but we also uh, work with revers. Our council members work very closely with it. And very often we will reach out to some other revers as well to preview this and, and find some holes in it before we launch it. So I don't have an exact ETA, but we are working on it and, and hopefully you'll see something by the end of the year. Uh, I believe that's it with all the questions. So thank you so much. And I'll turn it back over to Patrick. Thank you. I appreciate it. Um, let's jump back up to slide 25. So Rivers can see the emails for all our speakers today. Um, despite the fact that we're live, you can pause the stream at, at any time. So you have a chance to copy these down and our speakers look forward to your emails. I'd like to thank our speakers today, and we appreciate you for joining us. If you haven't already, subscribe to the Rever HQ channel to be notified when we go live with the next Rever Q&A, Rever Tutorials, The Rever Show, and much more. Thanks again, and wherever you are, have a good morning, a good afternoon, or a good evening, and we'll catch you on the next one. Thanks a lot.